This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A beautiful summer Sunday morning. And I'll bet that music stand is right in the way of that goofy camera, isn't it? It works? Woo! All right. You know, I'm not sure that I have any announcements this morning. Well, let's see. This afternoon there will be a memorial service for Larry Rodmaker at Garver Brick United Methodist Church beginning at 2 o'clock. And uh, we have been asked to provide some food. And so at quarter till 1, we're going to load up a truckload of stuff and uh, take it there. So if anybody would like to help, we got some folks lined up, but if you'd like to help, you would be welcomed. Anything else? Any other announcements? Food pantries. Food pantries. Is that this coming Thursday? Holy cow. Another month. <laughs> Food can pantry from 2 until 4.30. And... Uh, That'll be this Thursday. Good ministry, important ministry of our congregation. If you'd like to come and help, be a part of that, I think you would find it meaningful. If you know of anyone and within our school districts, the AO school district, that really could use some help, this is one of the ways that we could easily help. So I uh, believe that I saw a news article that at the end of this month, there will be, uh, th that will be the end of, what, would, what do I say? There has been, because of COVID, there was a law passed, a short-term law, that people cannot be evicted if they have not paid their rent. That comes to an end very soon. I think, the, I think either the beginning or the end of August. And at that point, I think you will begin to find people who really are, that are having some financial struggles. If you know anyone, we can help with our, at least with our food pantry. So I know this last week I got a call, uh, someone asking for some financial help from uh, Decatur area. And uh, anyway, this is something that will be happening around us very soon. Anything else that uh, we need to bring before the body? Mr. Ron. Uh, I want to thank everybody for helping us make the farmer's market go really, really good. We, uh, I think we've decided that we're going to stay inside. It's better for the people doing the shopping and so the vendors has got the baking goods and stuff and some watering candles and didn't want to sit outside with 95 degrees. So I think we're going to stay inside. Uh, vendors are all very, very happy with what they're doing up here. We had three new vendors this time. Hopefully we've got a couple of new vendors next time. Uh, everyone says that this is, we have four vendors. That we have Monticello, we have Monticello College, and a lot of the others that have been around for several years. So we feel pretty, pretty happy with everything that's, that's going on. I'm kind of thinking really that it's quite appropriate that we would have a farmer's market in an air-conditioned building. It kind of like reflects in the fall when they're in their air-conditioned combine out there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. It works for everybody. It's really except air conditioners. They're not going to be shaped for you on Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Ron. We had Yeah. Uh, we had people from Arkansas and Alabama and California. Uh, very impressed with the facility we have here. 
Yeah. <laughs> I I could see that. So yeah. If if you have any questions, Brenda will be glad to show you pictures. There were great 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 grandchildren. That was three greats on there. That uh, that doesn't happen too often. Anyway, thank you. Friends, would you please stand as you were able and join with me in our opening hymn, Lead On, O King Eternal. to worship. Come into the presence of the Most High God with songs of praise and shouts of thanksgiving. For our Savior frees us from slavery. Our Savior heals our diseases. Our Savior is our peace. You are a holy temple in the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, let us worship God. This morning's invocation, O Trinity, Fill our weaknesses with your strength. Bind up our brokenness with your unity. Calm our fears and our dread of dying with your peace. Let us be about the task of your love. Use us to build a holy place where healing and caring and joy blend in the tones of worship to the glory of your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. Even our best intentions go awry when we're not at one with God's purpose. Our gracious God journeys with us and provides for us with unending mercy, patience, and kindness so that when we repent, we find ourselves forgiven. Let us confess our sins before the Lord our God. Would you please join with me in our prayer of confession? Eternal God, your steadfast love endures forever. 
We confess that we act as if we are in control, as if you will bless whatever we do. If we think of others at all, it is with an eye toward their usefulness to us. If we consider your creation, it is to ponder what benefits us. We have failed to show your love or to do justice in obedience to you. We have no right to be called your children. Have mercy on us, God of grace. Lord, have mercy. Forgive our sins, we humbly pray. Put the mind of Christ within us, O God, so that our lives take the form of a cross. Use us to break down the walls of hostility within the church, among the nations, and around the world. Equip us to do your will, giving you glory, honor, and praise, together with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus gives us rest and peace. Our Master's touch heals us, and his shed blood is our salvation. In Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Praise be his holy name. Amen. This is our time of joys and concerns. Do you have any celebrations this morning? Brenda? Yes. You got a celebration yesterday. All right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Linda? Our uh, youngest grandson turned 12 yesterday. The youngest one. The youngest one. The youngest one. Mm. I don't know where the time went. Yeah, honest to goodness. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Any other joys this morning? Or I'd like to celebrate the uh, last Wednesday... Uh, Kelly, uh, Faye's daughter Kelly and granddaughter Olivia were, were have been here with us for this past week and uh, they and Faye and uh, Arthas and I went boating down on Lake Shelbyville. We rented a pontoon boat and we really had a wonderful time. I saw my grandson wired about wide open for close to 12 hours. I don't know how he didn't collapse of lack of burning out all of his energy but we really had a wonderful, it was a fun day and I was blessed to see a couple kids in a unique setting. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Any uh, concerns this morning? Linda. I would like to lift up the people in Germany where we were stationed, which is close to the uh, French border. The oldest town in Germany is Trier. They had severe flooding and right outside of the base that we were at, um, one of the, the uh, bridges that we would have to go over washed away. So they're having a terrible time over there yeah. while it's raining. Um, and the last time it happened was like in the 1950s or 60s. Because we're right on the Mosul River. And it, it's horrible. Yeah. So, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And I'd say in a similar fashion, we lift up the folks out on the West Coast where there are fires that are burning in, in ways that we've not seen in the past. So, and, and the water, I mean, there are some 
issues that are happening, especially in the West, that are, uh, will change lives and livelihoods. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Doris? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like to have traveling mercies for our daughter, Jenny, and her two kids. They're going to go to Arkansas to go see a little bit for a while. So, um, I know it's not her name, but I call her a little bit. <laughs> She's not little anymore. And uh, she'll be driving with the two kids. So, I'd like to have yeah. So Lord, in your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. prayers. I did this uh, week earlier there. I it was uh, prayers for Don Long Sr. and for Don Farrell, uh, two clergy in this area that a uh, good many of you know, both having health issues. So Lord, in your mercy, hear Lord, our prayers. prayers. And Donna lifted up this morning that her sister Mary fell and uh, broke her femur so, femur, so she will be going through, I'm going to assume surgery and recovery and that'll be a real challenge. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And also for the family of uh, Linda Lou, who is Donna's sister who passed this last Friday. She asked prayers for her husband Stanley Swisher and family from Missouri. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Any other uh, prayers or silent prayers? Um, I would just like to ask for prayers. Um, the, the returning to work brought a lot of anxiety that I was not really prepared for. So I've been processing all of that, and um, it's a lot more than I would have expected. The, the thought, like, random thoughts, like, I have to be in an elevator with another person that I don't know, will, like, you know, just send anxiety yeah. Lord, in your mercy, your hear our prayers. And I think there will be lots of people, not just where you work, but, you know, our nation's going through this real struggle of some areas where we can live without masks, and it would seem that whatever normal used to be is some of it is returning, and there are other places where this COVID is uh, spiking and changing it just this last year and a half or so has just been out crazy time hasn't it you know really has been lord in your mercy hear our prayers my friends would you please join with me in the prayer that christ jesus himself taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> Holy Spirit, come and dwell in us. Place Jesus Christ in us so that he is the cornerstone holding us together and making us a sacred place where steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next hymn is just a closer walk with thee. And that is found in the little black book, the Faith We Sing book. The number is 2158. 2158 for those of you who use the hymnal. Oh, oh, oh. 
sixth chapter of Mark, verses 30 through 34 and 53 through 56. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, hey, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away to the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land and Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to whatever they heard, wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. How about that? You know, it's summer, right? It's summer. This is time for vacation. How many of you have or are planning on taking a vacation? All right. I know Joan is gone for a couple weeks, and it's time to just clear out, go think other things, right? Time for rest, time for renewal. But guess what? It's kind of like when we have the show of hands. Not everybody is going to do that. Not everybody. In fact, Americans take less time off and enjoy fewer days of vacations than just about any other industrialized nation. Believe that. Average Americans uh, take just about two weeks of summer vacation. That makes us vacation misers, someone said, when compared to, say, the Germans. Germans who have the reputation of being incredibly hard-working people, right? The uh, Germans enjoy an average of six weeks of summer vacation. The French, who have a little over five weeks of vacation, uh, so someone just says, hey, try to find a, a native wandering around the streets of Paris this time of the year. They're all out, I don't know where they go, to the Mediterranean, to the mountains, to the wherever, you know? They're gone. Americans are working more and producing more, that's to be sure, but it's also because they work longer. They work more hours. That's part of the deal. So surprisingly, the average productivity of the Germans or the French is not much more, less than the Americans considering how many fewer hours they actually work. All right, so what's this all about? It takes us to our gospel reading this morning, right? Jesus and his disciples have been busy. They've been doing ministry. They have been changing lives. They have been healing. And in our story this morning, Jesus had sent the, his disciples out to do their ministry, and they're coming back, and they're exhausted. They're exhausted. And what does Jesus do? He tells them to go to a quiet place. 
to go take some time off, to go relax, to go, to go. And as it works out, they do that, and where they go, there's people there waiting for them. There is this ministry that constantly, because people are seeking to be healed, and they're in that business of healing. But the point, Jesus, that more than just gives them permission to go and take care of themselves and to go and rest, he actually tells them to do. He isn't giving them permission, he is telling them, as in a new commandment, take some time off, walk away from this. Any of you, uh, any of you do that very often? Do you guys find yourself able to just go and play? I see one head back here. That we're, that's Brenda. That's Brenda. And yet, and yet when, we, when we visit with Brenda, she's going to tell you about all the hard work she has getting ready for that fall festival. And there will be a few other things like that. So she isn't sharing a lot of play stories. She's sharing a lot of work stories. The truth of it is, isn't that a lot of what we do when we get together? Uh, I know we males tend to, uh, we tend to talk business. And when we clergy get together, I call it clergy talk. You know, we're just talking about the work of whatever it is that we're doing. Jesus gives us permission, even commands us to take some time off. That is a really hard thing for a whole lot of us to do, I think. Uh, one of those things is that for most of us, we take this thing of work very seriously and somehow we feel like we've got to be productive for the kingdom. I know I certainly feel that as a clergy. i be honest with you, when I got to the end, uh, when, we, when we started to talk about coming back together and doing in-person worship, I found myself at that point, we've been in this whole thing, this bubble, living in this isolated bubble for a year, I found myself exhausted, spiritually just empty. I found that also when I did hospice work. I, did, I was hospice chaplain before I came here for a year and a half. And when, I, when I, that finally came to an end, <laughs> my way of saying it, I went home and sat down for a month. I just, I just was empty. We need to take that time to be away, to go and be with loved ones, to go and just step away. I, uh, I think for most of us as Americans, it's hard for us to kind of wired in this got to work mode. That's, that's part of our culture. I uh, was sharing with our trip with Arthas uh, last uh, last Wednesday. I had a wonderful trip with a little kid. And I, uh, I got to drive the boat. So I was able to be in control. So that part of me that had to stay working, I, you know, I had, I had my grip on the, on the wheel. So anyway. So we, we found a nice place in Lake Shelbyville where there was a sandy beach. Nobody there, nobody around at all. It's an enormous lake. I never, first time I've ever been on it. So I pull in and Arthas and Olivia got out and they're wandering around in the water. And they had a wonderful time. She is a, she is a most unusual young 10 year old girl. I am really, that was a blessing just to see her in action, so to speak. So they're playing, this four-year-old, this 10-year-old, and pretty soon they get out to where the water is deeper and you don't touch the bottom. And uh, she was quite okay with that because she swims and, and Arthas kind of went after her. And I don't know exactly how it happened, but uh, I just remember he goes in this panic mode because he can't touch the bottom. He's got a life preserver on, he is safe. And uh, here I am, I can just remember seeing myself, I'm up in the front of the boat on my knees, holding on to his life preserver and talking to him, trying to get him to calm down. You know, relax, relax, relax. You know? 
it's not so bad that this thing of swimming is about relaxing, but you gotta, you got to let go of it up here to really be able to enjoy it. He never really did relax. He, it got better, but he never let go of his need to be in control. After I got away from that for a bit, I thought, isn't that where we are with this thing of taking vacation, of getting away, of just, how do you play? I don't know how to play. Do you guys, how many, besides cards? And I don't even play cards. <laughs> what do you guys do to play? You know? It's like, God, Jesus more than gives us permission to take care of that part of life, he gives us a commandment. You know? Take care of yourself. Let go. Relax. I, uh, I found an interesting part of a sermon by uh, Barbara Brown Taylor. Do you know what Sabbath is? I mean, this is one of those terms we throw around in the church, right? And we can. Sabbath. This is a Sabbath day. We, yeah, but do we really live what Sabbath is? Because Sabbath is more than just the one day off of the week. Sabbath is a, is a spiritual experience of resting and allowing God to be God instead of us trying to take God's place. Okay. So let me share some of this with you. The commandment of the Sabbath is the longest of, of the commandments, which takes nearly a third of the entire Decalogue. That is five, first five books of the Bible. In his book on the Sabbath, Rabbi Abraham Herschel says, the Sabbath is the only one of God's creations called holy. Everything else he called, God calls good. Only the Sabbath is called holy. The sanctification of time preceded the sanctification of persons. The people weren't sanctified until they became the chosen people. So this is, you got a few, maybe a thousand years of history in there. Uh, places were not sanctified until the tabernacle. The Sabbath was the first and truest medium of God's presence and holiness. Time, time away, time to rest and take care of oneself. So Herschel says that the Sabbath is the first and truest medium of God's presence in creation. First time in the scriptures that God makes God's presence known. Observing the Sabbath has always been kept, has always kept God's people from being absorbed by the alien cultures where they resided. The Sabbath commandment came along before the rest of the commandments, even the slaves in Egypt, they observed Sabbath. I am struck by this one sentence about the alien cultures. So what are the gods of our cultures? What, are, what is the church competing with right now this morning? Sports. Got any grandkids that are playing in a sports events on a Sunday morning? They got traveling sports teams. This, I mean, so there, there's other gods in our world that we have and will continue to compete with. You know? So six days of the weeks they belonged to Pharaoh, but on the Sabbath they were free men and women who belonged only to God. The Sabbath was not a day simply for recovering their strength. It was, it was not free time, it was freedom time. It was time to recover their identity, time to remember who and whose they were. So this one day off was had a purpose. It wasn't just to go fishing, boating, playing sports. It was a time to be in that relationship that God offers us. Time of finding that peace and knowing I like that. Knowing not only who we are, but whose. All right, so he goes on, he says, Later there were 300, 234 specific tasks prohibited. Those were the laws. The Sabbath became filled with laws. You can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that. Does that sound like religion in some corners of the world today? You know, you got all these laws, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. 
Anyway, the basic idea was to cease and desist from all acts of creation, to stop competing with God, to stop helping God, so that we might remember that the world was created by God totally without us. Uh-oh. The world would be preserved at least until Monday without us. Isn't that a thought? I can tell you as a pastor, I, I, I know what my motivations have become over the last 30 years as clergy. and uh, It's risky to think that God can make God's creation happen without me. <laughs> you know? That's the whole thing. When we really follow the Lord of life and we become, you know, we become engaged in this thing, it's hard to let go of it because, because we're a part of the creation. I'm guessing that, uh, Ron and Remy, you have some of that in your ministry out in the community. Hard to just let go of it and say, trust that the Lord is going to do what the Lord's going to do. Well, that was scary. Anyway, so the Sabbath was a mandated gift, a gift we were commanded to enjoy. Commanded. We don't like this. We like to control our own time. Even though God created us for the freedom of this day, we voluntarily become slaves. Once again. I think it's a true statement. It works. It makes me dead smoke to my issues. All right. Sabbath time is not useless time, it is time we use, it is time we stop in order to remember. That's all that Sabbath first meant in Hebrew. You stop. Just stop doing what you do. And yet we get caught up in the acts of subduing the earth, having dominion over it. Sabbath reminds us that we are create creatures and not the creator. I, uh, how does that strike you? God's telling you to take some time off. Go play. Anything come to mind or or do you feel anxiety? <laughs> I don't I've thought about this uh, this last week. How does one go and play? I forgot. I think I used to know how to do that, but I forgot. No, you never know. Huh? You never know. I never <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's some truth in that. So one of, one of my little one of my little uh, sayings, men work. I've said that to Faye many dozens of times. Men work, men haul. You know, this is I don't know. This is part of my identity. I don't like that anymore. <laughs> anyway, what were you going to do? and watching my great grandson. That I have found some happiness. As I have seen him become a happy child instead of a pretty pretty unhappy child. I've seen that one. And it's a real blessing. Uh, so we stress the other commandments of Jesus to love the poor, to feed the hungry, to bind up one another's wounds, and to bear one another's burdens. I uh, Yesterday was at this memorial service and talked about the 25th chapter of Matthew. You know, when you've done it to the least of these, my children, you've done it to me. That's to reach out and care for those that are on the margins of society. We get that command. And we we understand that command. I do. That's why we have a food pantry. That's why we have an outreach to the community. You know, uh, that we get. But the commandment to go into play, to take time off, to renew that relationship with the Lord, that too is one of the commandments. And 
in my experience with doing a spiritual retreat, which has been an important part of my journey over the last 30 years, uh, that is a time away set aside. It bears great fruit. It really does. And I, I hope as, uh, I'll just say I hope as COVID begins to ratchet down and we begin to feel more freedom and we begin to see uh, organizations, uh, ministries begin to come alive again, begin to regroup, come back together. I hope there will be some of you that will uh, take the time to go on a uh, spiritual retreat. Uh, there's one that I know, but there are many others. Take the time to be set aside, to be away from all of the, all of the stress of the world out here, all the baggage we drag along with us every day. Go to a place where you can experience, in a special way, God's presence and blessing, a time of renewal. Or we'll be kind of like the graphic up there. If we're not careful, we get burned out spiritually. We really do. All right. Take a break. Amen. Amen. All right. Would you please join with me in our closing hymn, Savior, Life of Shepherd Leader. Seek out your neighbor in love. If it is writ within your power, be reconciled to your enemies. Hunger and thirst for the rule of Christ Jesus, and let him dwell in your minds and in your hearts. May God grant you peace in your sleeping and waking. 
May Christ fill you with joy in your working and playing, and may the Holy Spirit drive you with passion in your love for the Lord of life. Go in peace, my friends. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.